Voyager's stellar rise to infamy begin? In the streets of New Atlantis. No parents, no godparents. Just a homeless punk kid robbing whoever he could for the credits. Were these violent crimes? Murders? I'm, uh, the defendant you even asked that question, Gail. Sure, a few people here and there walked away with injuries, but I'm not some kind of butcher. That doesn't sound as heartless as your reputation would imply. Well, like I said, I was just a kid. Were you ever caught by the authorities in New Atlantis? Oh, dozens of times. But I'd just give them a fake name, or they just slap me on the wrist and send me on my way. They obviously didn't think that I'd amount to anything and didn't want to waste their time with rehabilitation. What changed that? Was it the robbery in 2218? 2218? Huh. Oh, yeah. The Gal Bank archives. Very good, Gail. See, you've done your research. That would be when I rounded up a few of my buddies and we knocked the place over. Made off with a ton of credits. <sighs> my first big score. Is that why the Crimson Scar decided to bring you into their ranks? That's right. They brought me in, taught me the ropes, and I did crimes for them for... Oh, five years. Till I decided I wanted more. I got rid of their leader, put myself in his place, and started running the show. I've been the one in charge ever since. Was it absolutely necessary to cut his throat and leave the body on a public street in the well? On the street, reputation is everything. I wanted everyone in the city to know that Jasper Cricks was taken over. I think they got the message. Need something? So, tell us about Jasper Crix's version of the Crimson Scar. All I can tell you is that under my guidance, the Crimson Scar became more influential than every other syndicate combined. Here I was, 22 years old, and I had power. People that followed my orders in an endless stream of credits. Gail, I have to tell you, I was having the time of my life. So you consider extortion, robbery, burglary, kidnapping, assault, and murder to be positive life influences? No. I consider them as just means to an end. Those so-called crimes were merely stepping stones until I had enough wealth to buy the Crimson Scar a few spacecraft. Yes, let's talk about that. It appears you weren't satisfied with terrorizing New Atlantis alone. Oh, I've never stopped reaching, Gale. The amount of money we were making in New Atlantis was decent, but the really big scores were in space on the cargo ships. We're talking millions of credits, maybe more. <laughs> Who the hell could count it all? Most people assume this is when the UC decided to actively set up a task force to pursue the Crimson Scar. That's correct. Those idiots in charge of the United Colonies were clearly embarrassed that they had allowed the Crimson Scar to make the jump into space. They sent ships after us. Lots of ships. I almost think that they enjoy starting wars. Perhaps this was the first time you had finally reached too far. You could say that. I count my time running the Crimson Scar as a learning experience. I wouldn't say I reached too far. I'd say I reached too fast. Didn't cover all my bases. Made some stupid mistakes. One thing's for certain, though. When I was finally arrested and thrown into the lock, I had plenty to think about. Ah, he's back. So, you got something for me? I got your ring. Clay's not around anymore to miss it. Oh. And I hope that bastard went straight to hell. The oh, here's your credit. I think it's time for a drink myself. Thanks to you, I'll be spending the rest of these days in peace. Certainly. Let's talk about something else. How did the Crimson Scar become the Crimson Fleet? After I busted out of the lock, I decided to take things to the next level. I had the key, a 
few UC ships and a couple dozen ex-cons at my side. But I needed more. So I sent out the call. Once word got around, it didn't take long for freelance pirates from every corner of the settled systems to show up. And this is how the Crimson Fleet was born. Exactly. The key became our base of operations. We spent months reinforcing our position there, making it nearly impossible to approach. What was the UC's response to the situation? First of all, UC security gave up and handed the reins over to the big guns, the UC Navy. The Navy, in turn, sent ships to attack the key. I'd say there have been three major attacks over the last few years. And as you can tell by the fact we're having this interview, all the attacks were embarrassing failures. Do you feel these embarrassing failures led them to form UC systems? <laughs> Absolutely. They've clearly given up and decided to shove the responsibility onto a separate division. That way, in the public eye, the UC Navy can move forward, proud and strong, while UC SysDef continually takes all the blame. It's all about PR spin for them, Gail. That's how the UC operates. Kind of disgusting, don't you think? Hmm. Sounds a bit like you're trying to deflect attention off the atrocities the Crimson Fleet commits on a daily basis. Atrocities, huh? How about fighting the Freestar Collective over a bunch of rocks hanging in space? How about thousands of people dying while a bunch of pencil-pushing bastards sit in a cushy office and draw lines on a star map? Maybe the United Colonies should stop the bullshit and take a hard look in the mirror to see who the monsters really are! Tell us about your arrest. Oh, my arrest was spectacular. Definitely one for the record books. You see security sent an armada after our little fleet of ships and picked us off one by one until the remainder of us made it to the wheel. For our listener's benefit, that was the star station in orbit around Voli that you destroyed just before your arrest, correct? You see, that's what they'd have you believe, but the truth is much less sinister. There was a firefight on the wheel when they tried to bring us in. We hold up, but you see security unleashed hell. The damage they caused was catastrophic. We only surrendered so we wouldn't die when the station exploded. Well, the UC says you set demolition charges to try and cover your tracks and make your escape. That's their story. You'll have to go with your gut on what you think really happened. Anyway, they took us in and tossed us into the lock. That lovely resort they opened on Suvorov. And you were imprisoned there for how long? Well, it was supposed to be for life, Gail. <laughs> but I ended up serving two years before I decided I'd had enough. Is there any particular reason that you started the riots that eventually led to the worst prison break in United Colonies history? Yes. I'm quite proud of that, actually. I honestly didn't think it would go as well as it did. As for the reason, well, it's simple. The UC were treating us like animals. The conditions in the lock were ridiculously bad and no one cared. That's why they stuck us on that ice ball in the first place. Out of sight, out of mind. Your escape caused the deaths of many that were stationed at the lock. Some would brand that as a bit dismissive for what you're describing as a protest. If you were simply advocating for your fellow inmates, why didn't you just go through the proper channels? And what the hell was I supposed to do? Send a strongly worded letter to my duly appointed representative? Wake up. The UC only responds to actions, not words. In my mind, there was no other choice. You know what? L let's move past my time at the lock so we can get to the point of this goddamned interview. Tell us what the future holds for the Crimson Fleet. <sighs> changes are coming, Gail. Huge changes. Crimson Fleet will soon be a much bigger player in this little game between the members of the settled systems. That's quite a bold statement. Would you care to elaborate? Well, let's just say that I'm on the brink of a score so large it makes everything else pale in comparison. 
beyond that, you'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> if you aren't willing to discuss the details, why grant SSN end this interview? Simple. I refuse to allow that you see the spin or bury the story, making it sound like they're in complete control of the situation. I'm gonna tell you right now, they aren't. Why does the Crimson Fleet need to make this mysterious move that you're being so evasive about? <laughs> I know Sysdef instructed you to draw this meeting out as long as possible. So let me sum this up. I intend to make sure that the Crimson Fleet becomes the United Colony's worst nightmare and nothing. I mean, nothing in this universe will stop me from achieving that goal. There are those that would disagree with you and claim this interview is grandstanding, or worse, a recruitment tool. After all, SSNN reaches every corner of the settled systems, and your aspirations could inspire the Directionalists to turn to the fleet. You and the sheep that listen to your garbage can believe whatever the hell you want. If you were so worried about what I had to say, you wouldn't have allowed yourself to be brought here. Let me just ask you one final question before we wrap up. Fine. Go ahead. When is enough going to be enough? How many credits does Jasper Criggs need until he's satisfied? I should have expected you to ask such a stupid question. How the hell could you ever understand? You with your fancy education, and your sheltered upbringing, and your cushy media job? Me? I came from nothing. Everything I own, I've literally drawn blood to gain. There's no need to get personal. I'm simply trying to state the facts so that our listeners can make judgments of their own. Lady, I got news for you. Half of your listeners think I'm a hero. The other half are scared out of their goddamn minds, and they should be. Perhaps we should talk about something else. No, that's it. We're done. Can you guys get her the hell out of here? Make sure she takes all the sound equipment with her. Well, that's it then. Thank you for your... Actually, before you go, Gail, there's one more thing I would like to say. Yes, of course. What is it? When you broadcast this interview on SSNN, I want you to remember that I'll be listening. If you edit even one word or manipulate my voice to change anything I've said, I will hunt you down and kill you. In front of everyone. Do you understand? I, uh... I understand. You have my word. All right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comp spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jim's. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. Don't worry. We know how to deal with her type. Should I expect any trouble? You're in the fleet. You should always expect trouble. <sighs> as far as Juan goes, even though she's one of our newer contacts, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with her. Sounds like she'll be useful. I sure hope so. Cause she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. I shouldn't need anything except the prototype's primary logic module. Hmm. Interesting. Well, don't take any chances. Nave is right. 
Just grab everything labeled Com Spike that isn't nailed down. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Understood. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. <laughs> okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. Lovely. We'll talk later. And just what is on your mind at this moment? Any day you make it through is a victory in my book. Ships separated. Engaging drive. Your neighbor's new recruit? Mm, now I'm wondering how much she told you. That you're new, but capable. Other than that, not a whole lot. Neva talks a lot, but that's not the same as talking too much. You're still a mystery to me. SY920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Let's hear them. Good. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. There's more at stake than just your route. We're determined to get on that station, with or without your help. I realize this is important to Delgado. I also know he would just as soon kill me to get what he's after. I'm simply setting boundaries to help protect my interests, while still serving Delgados. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. How much do you know about the job? Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out, if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So, it's up to you. Delgado wants the comm spike, a signal decryption device. Interesting. When we get to the station, I'll see if I can pull any information on its whereabouts. Hopefully that'll make for a smoother trip. What else do you know about the comm spike? Less than you. And even if I did, I'm a smuggler, not a scientist. But if Delgado's after it, then I have a feeling there's a pile of credits waiting at the end of this job. So we better do it right. 
I'd like to know who I'm working with. Can you tell me about yourself? I'd like to, but I need to keep a low profile. In my experience, the more people know about you, the more they have over you. You got to have somebody you can trust. Famous last words. But you do this job right, and who knows what the future holds. Anyways, I appreciate the small talk. Delgado's crew aren't usually so chatty. But let's keep our focus on the mission. We can swap bar stories and share scars when we've got enough creds to buy the bar and fix the scars. How often do you dock at this station? Enough to be on a first name basis with the marines working the cops. It also helps they want us to dock. The cargo ship means supplies, special requests, slates from home. In the void of space, a cargo hauler is a soldier's best friend. Uh -huh. We'll talk more on the ship. flying the swan anyway when the cargo became more valuable than the ship true the fleet's got us real busy these days and we are making good money smuggling all this contraband but if any time was the right time for a break hey there's still work to do i need to check with my contacts at the spaceport and find out what gods are on rotation when we leave port then it's back to the key to make sure delgado gets his cut and to make sure he hasn't cut us out I worry sometimes that being in New Atlantis, we're missing out on the big scores. I know that old dog has something big planned. I can feel it. Sheesh, that is a lot to think about. And here I thought the pirate life was carefree. Maybe for some people, but that's not how I work. Well, you feel free to plan our next moves from now to the new year. I'm all about living in the present and being where your feet are. That's fine. Just make sure to wipe those feet before boarding my ship. the credits keep rolling in, life's good. things to know. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Fair warning, I get anxious when I don't get to talk. Then try biting your tongue. Literally. We can't afford any screw-ups. The last thing we want is an entire UC station full of armed guards questioning our presence. No, that would be bad. Although, not as bad as what the fleet will do to us if we come back empty-handed. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. I'm ready. Let's go. Alright, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. We'll grab drop the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship. The fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. 
bore the record, I, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. First things first, the station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But, if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. What if I get stuck? Is there any way to reach you? Provided you haven't sounded the alarm, then yeah, like I said. If you can find an intercom, I'll keep a channel open. I hope you got that graph drive ready then. Very funny. But if you do get into trouble, try and use that quick wit to your advantage. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Swan, loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Cargo haulers are restricted to the cargo bay. I'm in the cargo bay, just checking in. And you found the intercom. That's a start. If I'm not mistaken, the maintenance door should be in front of you. If you can find a way to open it, it'll get you past the first checkpoint. I'll see what I can do. I'm not worried. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Anyway, the door will let you access the vents. Go up the vents and to the barracks. You should find a uniform there. The uniform should get you through the checkpoint and to the elevators. We'll talk again once you get to the command bay.
think you learned to pick up. You know what? On second thought, I don't want to know. I made it to the command bay. Good. And no alarms or warnings on the comps. Music to my ears. If you found a uniform, be sure to put it on. They'll provide some cover. I've hacked into the database, and it seems information on the comm spike is in the archives. There's a checkpoint you'll have to pass, which requires a clearance code. Plenty of options, to be sure. We just need to choose the one that plays to our strengths. Right. If you know yourself, you'll know the best path forward. If the two of you plan on using a disguise, try the security office. Otherwise, there's always a way around. Going dark for now. We'll talk again once you've located the comm spike. Not yet. The archives. Well, you better hurry. You know what they say, Green. Fifteen minutes early. Need your clearance code, Marine. Since when is this area restricted? It's been that way since Commander Natara took over. No entry in the command bay without a clearance code. Hmm, must have gotten turned around. I'll say. You might want to track down your commanding officer and have him clarify your post. Maybe they'll draw you a map. You certainly know your way around a computer system. Get quick, Ensign. I'm busy with half a dozen spreadsheets that I'm pretty sure I'd rank you. And you know how the commander feels about breaking the chain of command. She hates it. I'm a person. Can a spreadsheet really attract me? Are you kidding? Being a person puts you exactly at the bottom of the totem pole. Look at me. I'm an engineer, graduated top of my class, and I'm pretty sure the coffee machine gets more respect. At least the spreadsheet actually does some heavy lifting. Busy with what? I'm sorry, Ensign, but I don't think you have the clearance for that information. Especially when the problem concerns a leak. Well, sorry to bother you. Well, you're a polite one. If only my spreadsheets were so obedient. If you're looking for a clearance code, you'll find it on the computer in the security room. I don't know you, Benson. You sure you have clearance? Watching too many vids, but this station scares the crap out of me. I hear footsteps in the vents, like someone's moving around inside him. Someone or something. 
Now we're not allowed to bring in custom firepower, but I'm not going to let some excessively alien looking creature get the best of me. Got some weapon mods smuggled in with my personal effects. Just need to assemble them without the lieutenant or commander Natara noticing. your face, Ensign. Need your clearance code, Marine. I've got a code. All right, Ensign. Let's hear it. ZX321D. You're clear, Ensign Zeremi. I assume the two of you are together? We're from the same unit, yes. Then you're both clear. Kindly to loiter us on my ship. You lost, Ensign? If you aren't assigned to this level, Ensign, you need to. Dr. Vogel has put in a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Uh, it's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about the potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel to contact me immediately if he identifies any suspicious behavior. Are you really leaving? It's nothing you've done. You've managed to get to the entire station without raising a single alarm. But the longer I stick around, the more people ask questions. And that's before they find out what you've been up to. Well, it was fun while it lasted. We worked well as a team. If only all my deliveries were as smooth as this one. That being said, I can stay in orbit for a short while. I'll need to send word to Delgado anyway, if you don't get off that station. 
but it looks like you'll need to find your own way off the ship. That doesn't mean you're trapped. On a station this big, there are bound to be other vessels you can steal. As a member of the Crimson Fleet, I trust you can handle that. I've made it this far. I can sneak my way off. You've made it this far without engaging in combat. I trust you'll have no issues moving further. It was an honor to work with a true professional. Good luck. If you manage to get the comm spike and make it out alive, next time you're at the Nova, I'll buy you a drink. There was a good reason that was locked. So, what's this big project you're working on? Well, I can tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Really? Couldn't you just trust me? No? Right out the airlock you go. Dr. Volk? I don't know. I've flown a discovery class, but I'm not familiar. Hmm. Intercepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. Can you talk to the commander? Get me reinstated? The tower is doing you a favor, Marcin. Would you prefer to court martial? Dishonorable discharge? Because all of that was on the table. I would have preferred things to remain as they were, so I made a mistake. But my work on the comm spike was and is irrelevant. Dr. Vogel will do just fine without you. Besides, we both know the only reason you were on that project was to bloat the budget so we could embezzle the creds. And to that end, your share of the funds should be transferred to your gal bank account shortly. What am I supposed to even say to that? Those funds are the reason I don't have a job. You can start by saying thank you. Hell, I even warned you not to poke the bear. Uh, Commander Natara being the uh, Ursine Predator in this analogy. <sighs> Aaron was right. I should have never hit send. <laughs> yeah, you screwed up. Royally. But... You can protect Dr. Gong and all the King's subjects by keeping your mouth shut from now on. Yeah. Hey, you want my advice? On some planet at the edge of the galaxy where you can relax for a bit. Lean back. <laughs> really dig your feet in the sand. Just get your mind off all of this. Oh, and stop with the sad puppy dog face, too. <laughs> Makes you look guilty. And what kind of face am I supposed to have? face of someone who got away with it. This model results in risk increased by a magnitude of uh, two. But we won't tell Commander Natara. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? I 
and I'm doing a routine check of the comm spike. I need access to the device. Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types, but the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Decryption on that level has vast military applications. No wonder the UC is interested in it. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. I'd be a good pilot. I love adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. I'm one of those new test pilots, actually. Splendid! That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. I'm a test pilot. I have years of experience to prove it. You make a compelling case. Alright, you've convinced me. You're the new test pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at Docking Bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. right there, Ensign. There's been word of suspicious behavior from someone matching your description. Then maybe you should stop pestering me and go fight this person? I think I've already found them. Unless you'd like to explain yourself. I think you've got the wrong person. Alright. Perhaps you'd like to elaborate. Look, I get it. You've got your orders, I've got mine. I hear you. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm trying to be reasonable here. I think we can work something out. Alright, you're clear. Just keep in mind there's been reports of a possible intruder on the premises. Reporting for duty, pilot? I'm expecting. Dr. Vogel gave the approval. Another test flight, huh? You pilots are braver than me. You're clear to pass. Don't forget to schedule the flight in the control center.
up the engines. Prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Let us know if you have any issues. 